Welcome to the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. The Stop COVID Deaths shorts make it easier for you to go to the presentations that you are interested in. I'm Dr. Raymond Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center. And I'm Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado, Adjunct Faculty of the National Telehealth Center. Together, Together let's, let's stop COVID deaths. True love lasts forever. Totoo ba yon? May forever na ba? Well, for some, yes. But immunity to COVID-19 vaccines will not last forever. Sorry, ah. <laughs> anyway, but let me define first at least these two terms, the primary series of vaccines versus the booster. By primary series of vaccines, we mean the dose and number of doses determined usually during clinical trials. Ito po yung uh, data that will show na ito yung optimal. So, the series of vaccine doses, pwedeng one lang or two to four doses, mahaba na yung four, to reach full effectiveness of this vaccine. So, if you remember or if you know, may children kayo, grandchildren, ang OPV for polio requires three doses. MMR two doses, yung flu vaccine, one dose yearly. But for the COVID vaccines that we have available right now, isa lang po yung merong one dose na binibigay and all others will require two doses. So now we move to def defining what is a booster dose, at least for this presentation. No? We refer to a third dose or additional dose to the primary series. So, so nabigyan na nung nando, no? tatlo, dalawa, then we add another one. So for some vaccines, a booster dose is needed months or years after the primary dose to refresh the immune system's memory and maintain protection. So itong mga naka-examples po dito, mayroon po talaga mga booster doses yan. But for COVID-19, do we need boosters? Masasagot po natin yan mamaya. So just to give you an idea, ito po yung for routine vaccines. Makikita nyo, yan, may mga check, kaya ilang doses ba yan and then... After so many months or many years, you have boosters. So, pa, kasi partial protection or maybe even no protection yet after one dose, which we just call priming dose, or okay, two to three dose primary series, and then you get higher or full protection after completion of what we call the primary series, but which will vary for different vaccine antigens. Okay. So let us understand why some will require boosters, others will not. So there is individual variation in immune response to vaccination. So I have listed here a number of these factors. So ang unang-una siguro is intrinsic host factors, yung age. Sino ba ang mas madaling maka-generate uh, ng immune response? The younger, the middle age, or the older? sex, my genetics of the immune response, then those who have comorbidities or are immunocompromised may have lower immune responses. And then we do have our behavioral as well as nutritional factors. Now, that this is only for children or may mga factors din to consider. Uh, among the extrinsic factors, we also have to consider, for example, pre-existing immunity. In the case of COVID, we have to look at natural immunity, yung na covid and then, do we give vaccine pa ba or what do we do? And then, for these are for the host factors. These are for vaccine and administration factors. So, we have to look at different vaccine types, the product, the vaccine itself. Kung meron silang adjuvant or what, the dose, yung concentration of antigen in that formulation. And then, the number of doses in the primary series and especially the interval between doses. And you will see later, two weeks ba ang interval between the first and second doses? May three weeks, may four weeks, may eight to 12 weeks. Mayroon pang ibang vaccines, not for COVID. Five to six months or longer. So these factors will make your immune responses vary. No? So iba-iba. So we're looking at different quality and types of antibody responses. For instance, so mayroon tayong tinatawag na IgM, IgA, IgG. Mayroon tayong neutralizing versus non-neutralizing antibodies. We also look at cell-mediated immunity. Mayroon tayong T-helper. Mayroon tayong killer or cytotoxic T-cells. Not just the quality, but we have to look at the quantity. Gano kadami yung na elicit na immune response ninyo. For antibodies, we're always looking at tighter 
So ito yung magnitude. Mas mataas na titer, of course, better. And that translates to a longer duration of immunity, which could be weeks, months, or years. Now, this is something I will explain again some more later, but over time, and with two or three or four boosters or doses, there will be an increase. This is an immunologic uh, phenomenon or immunologic based on immunologic principles. There will be increase in potency, if the avidity to yung total binding ng antibody sa lahat ng mga antigenic epitopes ng isang virus, for instance, yung affinity maturation, nagmamature din yung, yung strength ng binding niya habang tumatagal no, yung, yung interval dun sa, from the time you get the vaccine, and increasing the breadth of the immune response, meaning nagiging broadly reactive yung antibodies. Okay, siguro I'll, I'll, I'll just explain in more detail what does dosage requirement mean. So yung number of doses, kasi medyo iba-iba nga, no? So for primary immunization, example ko dito is for COVID, no? So for one dose, meron tayo yung Janssen. This one dose may provide enough immunity and afford up to 70% protection. So you see this, this uh, graph here, no? Pag one dose, this is what sort of antibody response you will get. But for other uh, COVID vaccines, they will require two doses like Pfizer, Moderna, Sputnik, Sinovac. Sino pa ba? Ah, okay, baka may nakalimutan ako. So pag the second dose ka, that will shoot up. I will explain again. Dahil meron tayong memory response. That is what we call a secondary response. So one dose versus two doses. The spacing between doses, as I already explained earlier, will also be important. So different vaccines use different schedules. Yung three weeks on Pfizer and Sputnik, I think have yung interval of three weeks between the first and second doses. Ang four weeks apart ay ang Sinovac, Moderna, uh, vaccine, I think. Uh -oh. And then AstraZeneca ang has the data on the longest interval, four weeks to 12 weeks. So... Actually, as a Seneca gave data on the higher levels of antibodies when the interval between the first and second doses was longer, up to 12 weeks. So actually, may pa silang ibang data na longer than 12 weeks na mas mataas pa yung antibody response. So thus, the need for booster doses after primary series will depend on the duration of immunity, which could wane in months or in short or in years. If short-lived immunity, we may need to give boosters. So ito yung pag tinuturo po sa mga estudyante, I think a lot of your healthcare workers here, you are in the immunology class. So ito yung primary versus secondary immune response. Ito yung first exposure, first dose sa inyo. So we call that the primary response, which is short-lasting, mabilis siyang bababa. It is smaller in magnitude, mas mababa yung level of antibodies. But th that is the time when the switch from what we call IgM to IgG would occur. So mag-uumpisa na dyan yung tinatawag nating memory response. So now when we give the second dose, yan yung secondary response. So meron tayong na-generate na, na memory cells from the first dose. So the memory cells developed from primary response are activated very quickly. So makikita nyo dito, in, in, a, in a, siguro a few days, five to seven days, papanik agad yung mga antibodies niya. Mabilis ang, ang response na yan. So faster response, also more pronounced, kaya tikita nyo, mas mataas, taas, taas ng ta titer, higher magnitude or titer of antibodies, at mas mataas, longer ang duration ng immunity. And repeated exposure, you may have a second, a third, a fourth, leads to faster, stronger response, more effective but limiting the infection. Okay. Yung mga antibodies na yan, siyang bagaling, no? They come from the B cells which become plasma cells. So this is a little technical, but what I want you to appreciate here is itong mga antibodies na to, galing nga sa B cells. So the level of antibodies you get will depend on how many B cells divide into so many plasma cells uh, later no, para to produce those antibodies. So mayroon tayong tinatawag na clonal expansion. Ito yung clone ng ngari, an, against one antigen of the COVID, uh, of the spike, for instance. No? Magko-clonally expand yan, so dadami. Ibig sabihin ng clonal expansion, yung isa, 
yung isang diesel magiging dalawa, yung dalawa magiging apat, walo. It is exponential. Then, as you go along, so, mauna, andito yung recognition. Marirecognize muna ng diesel yung inyong antigen, let us say, the spag. Then, ma-activate siya to clonally proliferate, dadami. Kaya din na nyo, padami ng padami yan, expand ng expand. And what we have seen is that more B cells clonally expand with time and with longer interval between doses. So more plasma cells will be there with dividing and therefore the plasma cells are the ones producing the antibodies. And as you go along, hanggang tumatagal yung time na yon merong tinatawag na affinity maturation. So parang di sa tao, habang nagmamature, na, 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 tatagal, ano, yung affinity of binding of the antibody to the viral antigen. And then may nage-generate ng memory. So yung sasabi ko, no, more antibodies produced with stronger affinity, therefore, there is wisdom in waiting for the right time to boost. Hindi po pwedeng agad-agad. This is another maybe techie or uh, basic slide, but what I want also you to understand is ito po mga vaccines natin. Or usually, ang meron tayo, either the whole virus inactivated vaccine or the spike. But within the spike alone, marami pong tinatawag na B-cell antigenic epitopes. So, hindi lang po isa yan. Marami yan. At nangaral yan, kaya nga po nagkakaroon ng, ng, ng immune evasion sa variants kasi naiiba yung mga antigens na yon dahil doon sa mga mutations na yon. But without the mutations mo na, there are so many such B-cell epitopes. So marami. And that means, ito, no, there are so many depicted here by different colors of antigens. And for each antigenic epitope, there will be an antibody that will be generated against that. So... This is a very good article that uh, was recently published as a preprint. Pero tuwan tuwa ako kasi actually there are many such publications on other vaccines. What this is showing here is ito yung Wang et al. just released September 5. No? The profiles of antibodies from those who received three doses, those who received two doses, and those who... Uh, had uh, yung antibodies after they re recovered from COVID. Ito yung convalescent sera. So these antibodies were dissected very, very comprehensively. So what did that show? Doon sa after the third dose, hindi ko napapakita yung mga two doses. Doon sa third, uh, yung nakareceive ng third dose, the, they produce a highly sifted humoral immune response. So meron pong na -e evolved na antibodies yung ka, sabi ko nga, iba-iba yung mga antibodies na yan. That showed better neutralization breadth, so mas marami, especially also seen against the variants of concern. They also, of course, showed quick memory response and yung higher titer dahil boosting long-lasting immune response in warding of COVID-19. So actually, they were able to analyze Napakarami po nito at hindi ito madaling i-analyze. 171 complex structures of SARS-CoV-2 neutralizing antibodies which identified, ito ha, kunwari ito, iba-iba yan sila. Identified structure activity correlates, so yung nakakabit ng mga antigen at antibody, pinag-aralan po mabuti yan. That revealed very potent variant of concern, resistant and broad-spectrum antigenic patches. So ito po ay medyo technical, pero ito po ay tinuturo natin sa immunology sa graduate school. Talaga pong yung mga antibodies ay naiiba-iba over time. There is a lot of memory, B-cell, clonal turn turnover. So yung siguro yung antibody composition changes in the B-cell repertoire, which is driven by prolonged repeated antigenic stimulation such as what you will find after a third dose or an additional dose. So, given that, to boost or not to boost, that is the big question. Hanggang ngayon, o balikan natin, eto nandito kayo, some of you may have received one dose, some of you may have received two doses. So ito, yun yung response better. Sinabi ko na that the interval, the longer the interval between the two doses, better. But, 
Tignan niyo kung yung second dose niyo pababa na o mas mababa pa, then you have to consider a booster. Then there, you have some considerations for boosters. So waning immunity ba? We are looking at risk groups. Sila yung talagang mas malimit, ma maaga, mag ng immunity, the elderly, the immunocompromised, but not just the waning immunity, but those at very high exposure risk. Yung mga talagang tumitingin ng mga COVID patients or yung mga frontliners, no? Kailangan ma makita lahat yon. Then we have to look at the epidemiology of breakthrough cases over time and the disease severity. So pag may mga variants, then performance. We also have to look at the data ng mga vaccines for COVID. Kung may data sila on how their third dose will perform or have performed. So yung looking at the safety and immunogenicity of the, not just the immunogenicity, dumami ba yung antibody, but is a third dose safe? Titignan din po natin yun. And then pwede bang mag-mix and match? Ano yung mix and match? Yung first, first two doses ay one platform and then the the booster, the third could be another platform. And then there are also recent studies on dose sparing or lower doses given as boosters. For instance, mayroong isang vaksin na nagkalahati lang nung, nung, nung dose na binibigay sa, sa primary series ang binigay sa booster and that was also very good. So question is, what is the optimal timing for boosters? Is it six months, eight months, 12 months? We do, we, we, it will depend. So, sorry na medyo anti-climactic ang ating, ang ating last slide. But despite saying all that, we have to remember that the WHO officials say that the scientific justification for boosters re remains unclear. Ang dami pong dapat consider. So, Director General Tedros acknowledged that third doses might be necessary for at least groups. But he said, we do not want to see widespread use of boosters for healthy people and who are fully vaccinated. The WHO target is for all countries to vaccinate at least 40% of their people by year's end. And in fact, the WHO called for a global moratorium on booster doses, at least sana initially until the end of September, lapit na po noon, pero ang baba, baba pa rin ang, global immunization coverage. So this was later moved to end of 2021 to prioritize vaccinating the most at risk people around the world who are yet to receive their first dose. And just to give you an idea of the countries who are planning on giving boosters or are already giving boosters, we have here listed Israel, nasa third dose sila, although narinig ko, gusto pa nila mag fourth dose, US, UK, Czech Republic, Germany, France, Thailand, Indonesia, China, Cambodia. So with that, thank you very much for your We hope that you learned as much as we did from that excellent presentation. We also hope that you will join us every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Manila time on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. So stay safe. Stay connected. And, and see, see you online. online.